All right, today is the day, and I promised you a couple of weeks ago that we were gonna be doing something that was gonna help move this project along, or at least help us to make it move a little bit more smoothly, and that is we are gonna join the front subframe and the rear subframe with the water cooling pipes. They will be running at the lower end of the bottom side of the tunnel in the end, but instead of just put those in there with clamps, I have decided to put them in there in kind of a eight point connection system so that it connects the subframes. That way I can work on the subframe, the engine, components, drivetrain, all that stuff as independent unit, even though the tub in the end will be the thing that joins those permanently, at least fully structural wise. But in the meantime, we're gonna have them connected so that we can work on them and they can actually maybe even run without the tub in place. As you can see, the tub is out right now and it allows us to work on the tub and the mechanical at the same time. So this is gonna be, like I said, a good move, maybe something that will help us out. Anyway, let's jump in, see how we do it. To start off with, we're gonna to have to pull our differential out of the way and set it aside to do some work on that at another time. And part of that is also gonna be that this adapter plate that uh, holds the main mount for this differential is also gonna to have to come out of here that has been modified of course to lower that differential and we will see that lowering is going to cause a little bit of a problem here there's a cross member on the subframe that needs to be trimmed out and lowered down because that differential is going to come right up against it and we don't want that vibration of those two metal pieces together so to get the clearance we're going to have to cut a little section out of that pipe and to do that i need to take it in the other room to create a little less mess in here. So we're gonna strip off all of our sheet metal and other things, take in that room. Now, when we get this gap cut, we need something to fill it with to put the integrity back into that pipe. So I've uh, cut this little plate, we're gonna call it the gap filling plate, and put a few bends in it because it's gonna come down along the gap that we're cutting out and then turn and come back up and uh, has a little two bolt holes in it going to be part of our bracket for this job. Take our angle grinder and cut this thing out. I thought it wasn't enough work to power up the plasma cutter. Maybe get a little uh, cleaner cut with this too, since it's not so easy to run a good straight line with the plasma cutter on a round pipe. Pop that thing out and put our plate in place. Now we need to weld it all in again. But I found I uh, had to widen out my gap filling plate by about three inches. So I'm just filling that little three inch extension there. And then we're going to tack it in place. Always a good thing to keep on your workbench is a good solid clamp to pull pieces of metal together. A clamp and a hammer. Always a thing that you just get a pound something to fill a gap. Tack it in. Then we'll run a final bead and of course a little grinding and cleaning up to make that nice and smooth and pretty. Now also, not because of the lack of integrity of this pipe, which still should be pretty strong with our gap filling plate in place there, but we are gonna add a little beam that runs across the front of this subframe. So I've just taken the whole saw and cut a couple of pieces so that they'll fit right around our uh, lateral run on the front subframe. Gonna tack them in place. Now this little beam is gonna go across the top and it will actually be the mounting surface for things like our windshield wiper motor and other mechanical things that may be up front in that under the front clamshell rather than trying to put fasteners into the laminates much easier if the subframe's there to use it for our structure mounting. So we got it all tacked in place nicely, weld it all up, and then we're gonna take this whole subframe back into the studio and start putting our coolant lines in. Now we want these coolant lines to be pretty accurate as they need to line up with the tub later on. 
So what I've done is I got this piece of cardboard that I've marked a center line on, and then I've got another mark that shows the inside of the side rails of the subframes. So I can set the laser up to shine down the center, but I don't know what center is. There's nothing in a good straight line down the center. The only thing I have is that shaft on the transmission. So we get the center as close as we can, but then we can move our laser over and run it down right alongside the subframe rail. And now I know I got that square according to the piece of cardboard. I can use the two of those to line up the front subframe. I'm blocking these wheels, although this subframe is pretty hard to move on those casters. Got to make sure things don't move. And you're going to see to this whole video, lots of readjusting to make sure everything's just right. So roughly get that front subframe in place. And we'll be back to that and uh, trying to line that up again. But one thing I do need to do is I can put my laser on the center line and I know where the center is on the subframe. Now this coolant line, the main brace is going to be bolted through this cross member that I need to add in. This runs just under the oil pan in the front, which is kind of the back of the engine. And I'm going to weld that in place, kind of a contorted welding position to uh, kneel down and push that pedal at the same time. But we need to get a good solid tack weld on there to that cross piece. Again, uh, work on lining that front subframe up. But this time, a little more permanently, as we're going to start doing some welding, we're going to sandbag it, put some heavy things against it, try to keep it from moving. So once the two subframes are kind of solidly stuck and put in their proper positions, we know our uh, tub, or at least our final mention of the tub, get that gap right. And now I'm uh, putting in the return coolant line shimmed it up on the front subframe and now I'm gonna block it up in the back here but the problem is I don't have any footage of putting this whole thing together it was getting late at night and I had the camera in the wrong place but there it is all welded together and here's what it looks like in the end I'll show you those welds but we're gonna run through real quick that I want these to have uh, multiple bolting points so I'm gonna also create some more brackets but like I said, it was getting very late and put it, wanted to get this video out. And so you're just going to see the templates to create those brackets. I'll come back and create them later. Now here is the coolant line as it comes back, that cross member. So we have a bracket that's welded to that cross member. And then we have another bracket that is welded to the pipe itself. And so the pipe goes through the bracket on the cross member and bolts on the two spots. We've got another bracket we're gonna create. It will go right here, and it will bolt through this hole on our transmission adapter. And then as it goes forward to the front subframe, we have a little plate that bolts to our little gap filler, two holes, two bolts. And then we're gonna build another bracket that we'll lay here and weld onto the tube and bolt to the subframe there. So we get a little more lateral stability So now that I've got this uh, two subframes joined together a little bit, I want to get ready to uh, be able to drop this tub on. And now it has to have a little bit of a gap in that front bulkhead. So I'm putting some little paint marks on here. So once I do some more lamination, I can see through the laminations, which is semi-translucent for about four layers thick. And I can use and go off those marks. But there is a section here that we know and we've got some surety and our ability to cut through here because we know where our tunnel is going to go, at least the bottom side of the tunnel. We still have to go back and uh, define the top side of our tunnel because we want to thin it down as best we can up there where we're going to be. But trimmed it out, and there it is. Well, there you go. We have the mechanicals joined together, at least in some sort of a means to keep them spaced correctly and so that we can connect things up, maybe get things running. But we also have the opportunity now to work on the tub without having to remove it from the subframes. That will help us move things along a little bit more easily. Anyway, I'm glad you stopped by to see us in our videos today. Hope you come back. See us again.